So next, I'd like to introduce our second speaker, um, Professor Shen Long Lee. Professor, you're welcome to share your presentation and get started. Can you see my screen? Good. Okay. Uh, I think before I'm going to send a chat. So some systems here. All right, I'm going to share uh, some playing here. Thanks for the introduction, Laurie, and uh, good morning or good afternoon, good afternoon, everyone. And uh, today I'm going to share uh, some of the work that we have been doing uh, using uh, social media data for mirroring the human movement uh, during this pandemic year. So this work is funded by NSF, NIH, and also the University of South Carolina. So it's kind of an interdisciplinary project working with other team members uh, in the university and also other other parts of the nation. So uh, a brief background about human movement and COVID-19 here. And human movement is among uh, the very important forces that drive the space of spread of the COVID-19 virus. And this has been confirmed by numerous studies. You can see the publication from Nature Science and uh, from all the other journals. And uh, so funded by uh, SNASF, NIH, and the University of South Carolina from those kind of uh, grants here, we ask a series of questions related to uh, human movement and COVID-19 spread. Uh, for example, here, uh, how well are people following the social distancing orders and how effective is the order uh, for you know, stopping the spread of the virus? So are there any disparities in implementing these orders? And if yes, what are the driving factors, some social economic factors and other kind of disparity uh, pattern that we can find here? And also how to integrate the human mobility into the predict models along with, for example, other data sources like vaccination data now. And there are a lot of other, a lot of other questions that we have been trying to ask here. So those questions are actually especially are relevant now uh, since we see the, the spreading of the Delta variant here. And uh, so we take a place-based view, uh, try to, to think about how we can mirror this human mobility using the social media data here, we are using Twitter data here. And so if you think about, look at this diagram here, uh, this diagram here, we have, think about, you know, we have places here like county, like state, like country, right? Different different kind of levels of places. And then we have population moving in each place. You can think about social media user, like Twitter user here. And then we can start by looking at the, you know, uh, those population flows. But since we are interested in geotech Twitter, for example, and those we are interested in data that they have location information, we can first extract and we try the population flows, give us uh, uh, just the over, overall view of how this flow changes. And then we can measure the population, um, further measure the movement, for example, the average movement distances uh, in the county during a specific day. And then further on, we can measure the connectivities between the places. Uh, so those kind of movement and uh, measurement here is all in the place and time framework. So this is kind of a overall uh, diagram, you know, a place-based view that we, how we, how, how you know, that uh, how we can guide our study uh, to measure the human movement using the Twitter data here, using social media. Data. And the following, I'm going to show you some uh, results here since due to the time limitation, I'm not going to give a lot of details about how we get this, but we do have the publications you can see at each of the slides here. And this result uh, shows us the changes of the cross state population flows uh, in March 2020. As you can see, the first one is from March 12th to March 13th last year. And then you can see the color, the intensity of the movement is decreasing gradually uh, as we uh, see the, 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 the order of national kind of uh, emergency, declare of national emergency here. And we can see that that population movement actually decreased that clearly reflected from this map here. And also we can see the similar pattern when you look at the global scale. So we developed an interactive web portal uh, for visualizing uh, this, uh, this data here. I, in the link I just shared with you there, the first one is about this portal. It's still there, but we still updated that, uh, this portal uh, already, but you can still see the, uh, the time period uh, that in last year, you can you know click a, a time here, a date here, and then you know zoom in, zoom out the map to see uh, how that looks like. And the second one is that we 
develop a method to estimate the daily number of visitors and residents at a specific geographic scale, for example, the county. Uh, for each county, we can we try to use Twitter data to estimate how many visitors are there, Twitter visitors are there in each county on a specific day here. And uh, then this is the, the result for 2017 using the method here, kind of validation of uh, our method here. You can see 2017, we know there are total solar eclipse in the US here. And you can see on August 21st, 2017, there is a very clear green belt showing us uh, that there are more Twitter users, more users, more visitors there on that specific day. And even after this solar eclipse, you can still see some, uh, 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 you can still see the blue belt here, but much weaker, right? People start to let to, to leave that region. And uh, you can see the spatial temporal dynamics of these visitor changes at this county level in this large geographic scale, like the whole nation here. Uh, so this is for this using the solar eclipse at case study to show this. And then if we look at using the same method to look at 2020, like last year, uh, this one shows us the county level visitor changes before and after a national emergency declaration in March. So you can see this is a Saturday uh, on March uh, 7th last year. And again, the blue uh, color indicate there, the, uh, the green color indicate there are more users, more Twitter visitors, and then the orange indicate there are less Twitter visitors. So on Saturday, normally on the weekend, there are a lot of movement, a lot of travels. And then, but on this Saturday, which is March 28th, uh, you can see the movement had been decreased a lot. There we can see a kind of a lot of brown. Uh, brown color, which means you know a lot of people don't travel and stay at home in their own county at least. So we also have a publication for this one. If you are interested, you can look at the method in more detail and other uh, kind of application here. And we further developed a scalable platform uh, for kind of extracting, analyzing, and also sharing uh, this kind of human mobility data that we get from Twitter and also from other big data sources here. And we combine this kind of uh, you know building the mobility and uh, we combine with the uh, ODT data model, which is origin destination time data model. It's a data cube. And then combine that with HPC, high performance computing. And then we are able to quickly query uh, and uh, query and visualize and aggregate the flows at different geographic scales and for different applications here. And uh, here, this map, this map shows you the human mobility patterns at different kind of a geographic levels. You can see the country level and county level and also the sensor track level. You can see the, the, the daily trends revealed from this human mobility um, from our, by using this system here. And uh, finally, we have, we developed the ODT Flow Explorer, which is uh, this online interactive web portal. I also share this link with you already. Uh, you can go there uh, to explore the human mobility at different geographic scale, like tracked county, country, state, and for the whole world. Uh, there are some skills that we don't have that for other countries. And also you can visualize, download the data and for your own research. So the portal now has been visited by a thousand of our user visitors and we have served over 1.8 billion flow extractions uh, from uh, over the world and also used by other researchers in their own research. So if you are interested, feel free to try this out and I already have a link there. So that's it, thank you. If you anyone interested in working uh, or in looking at more field about data that we, we produced, uh, feel free to contact me. Um, I have my email address at the beginning of the year. All right, thank you.